Hello again. We are on Pivot Point series. We're on message number two. And the title today is Turning Your Wilderness into Holy Ground. Isn't that something? We talked about last time that Moses was in the wilderness. He was on the backside of the desert. He was, he was out there with the sheep in this dry and desolate land. And at age 80, he was at kind of a dead end in his life. And in verse uh, 4 of Exodus chapter 3, it says, When the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. It's, it's interesting that God paid attention to the fact that Moses had paid attention. Part of the whole thing of the burning bush and part of the whole thing of all the stuff we're going through today with pandemics and, and other things is God is working to get our attention. And Moses turned, turned to look, turned to pay attention to what God was doing. And that's what the Lord wants us to do today. It says that the Lord saw that Moses turned aside and then God called to him and said, Moses, Moses. Just a week or so ago, Pastor Ryan gave a, a great message on the double names when God says Moses, Moses, or Martha, Martha, or Saul, Saul. And it's a term of endearment. It's a term of, of familiarity, of intimacy. And God here says Moses, Moses. It doesn't seem that Moses was used to hearing God's voice much. It doesn't seem that he was all that close to God up until this time. But God was calling his name. Isn't it interesting you know, God knows where you are today. He knows where you live. He knows your name. And that alone is a profound thing. I think most of Moses' friends and family that were in Egypt back with him in his first 40 years probably totally lost track of him, wondered whatever happened to him, whatever happened to that Moses guy. Here he is out with the sheep. But God hadn't lost track of him. God hasn't lost track of you. God knows exactly where you are today, and he knows your name. He's calling out to you. John, John, Mary, Mary, Lisa, Lisa, whatever your name is, he's calling out to you. And he says, I want to get your attention, and I want you to hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice, is what Jesus said, and he, he wants you to hear his voice. And verse 4 goes on to say, Moses said, here I am. When, when you hear his voice, you make yourself available to him. You say, here I am. And that's a real significant thing, that word here. Here I am. Because unless we acknowledge where we're at, it's hard for us to go where we're supposed to go. It's kind of like being at the mall. Have you ever been at the mall and you're looking for Macy's or you're looking for J.C. Penney or you're looking for a Cinnabon store or whatever, and there's a big map and it says, you are here. Until you know where you are, until you know where here is, it's hard to know how to get to Macy's or how to get to one of those other places. And so Moses says, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Can you say that to, today to the Lord? Here I am, Lord. You know where I'm at? Here I am. I'm available to you. And verse 4 goes on to say, God said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Think about that. Holy ground. Just minutes before, Moses was out in the middle of the desert, not really the middle, the edge of the desert, the middle of the wilderness. He was out there on his own with a bunch of smelly sheep and, and just taking care of sheep, doing his daily job. And all of a sudden, God says, take off your sandals because you're on holy ground. That is so powerful. In the middle of this sandy, desolate, dry desert, God says it's holy ground. I want to say to you today that wherever you're at can be holy ground. You, your marriage might be having challenges today. Your job, your career might be going through challenges today. Your finances, your kids, your relationships, so many things could be in very difficult times today. But you know what? When you Open yourself to the Lord. When you hear his voice and hear his, his instructions, he can turn your desolate place into holy ground. Your house could be a, a place of prayer instead of a place of contention and conflict. I, I want to encourage you with that today. You can turn it into holy ground if you hear God's voice and listen to him. Well, here's the pivot points from message two. God knows your name and where to find you. He can find you. Isn't that good? When he calls, you must respond and make yourself wholly available to him. Hmm. Number two, before you can successfully pivot and move in a new direction, 
You must come to honestly face your present condition and recognize where here is. That's why uh, AA and the 12-step things are so powerful because it starts with acknowledging, wow, I have a problem. My life is unmanageable. I need God's help. Number three, as you welcome God into your difficult circumstances, he will turn them into holy ground. Let's pray. Father, we just invite you today, Lord. We invite you today to come and inhabit our difficult places, our parched places, our barren places, our frustrating places, the difficult places in our lives. We invite you to come, Lord. We invite you to make them holy ground, to inhabit them by your presence and by your grace and by your glory, Lord. Come, Lord, we pray. Thank you, God, that there's hope no matter what our situation is, no matter where here is, you can start us off in a new trajectory as we pivot toward you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.